Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the process of taking some given measurements and creating a three-dimensional object that meets those requirements. You can see I've created a new SketchUp window. I've got my lady on her cell phone, and I can go ahead and delete her. I'm going to select her and press delete. Now I have a document open with some given dimensions for an object that we are going to create. So our task here will be to create a box with the following exterior dimensions. And this is going to be a cube, 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. Each piece needs to have a thickness of one half inch. And then the steps that we're going to follow, first we're going to draw the right and left sides at the full size of 12 by 12. Next we're going to draw the ends of the box and they are going to fit in between those two evenly, correctly spaced sides. And then lastly, we're going to draw the top and bottom into the remaining space. A 3D modeling program like SketchUp simplifies this process because it allows you to draw within constraints of other pieces that you've already created. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle that's 12 inches by 12 inches and then I'm going to push pull and make it a half an inch thick. Now something we haven't talked about yet is how you can rotate and, de and determine which face or plane in your sketch an object appears on. Right now you can see that I'm drawing perpendicular to the Y or excuse me the Z axis or the blue plane. I want to draw this sketch so that it appears on the green plane or perpendicular to the red plane. And I can constrain my drawing by using the arrow keys. You can see that I'm clicking through the three options right now. Clicking to the left constrains it, on to, constrains it green perpendicular to the green plane. Clicking right with the right arrow on my keyboard constrains it to the red plane and clicking the up arrow constrains it to the blue plane. I would like to constrain this to the red plane and now I'm going to type in the dimensions I would like 12 inches by 12 inches and press enter. And there is my box <clears throat> 12 inches by 12 inches square and now I need to use my push pull tool to give it one half inch of thickness. 0.5 enter. Now before we go on, we need to create a group out of this object so that it does not get stuck with other items that I'm going to draw. So I triple click and then right click and press make group. Now I need an identical piece to this one that has a dimension of 12 inches from exterior corner to exterior corner. A cheat here is to grab my move tool and I can click on my object and start dragging and as we've seen before if I press control it replaces the original object and makes a copy of it. I want this to be spaced at 12 inches so I'm going to type in 12 and press enter. Now before I go on I need to confirm that my exterior dimension from the exterior corner on the left to the exterior corner on the right is in fact 12 inches. So I'm going to grab my tape measure tool and I'm going to select the outside corner on my left side and drag over to the outside corner on my right side and you can see that my dimension is one foot and one half inch or twelve and a half inches. That means I need to move my right side in a half an inch to get my correct dimension. So I'm going to grab my move tool I'm going to click and release and start dragging making sure I stay constrained to the red axis as noted by the pop-up box by my cursor and I'm going to type in a half an inch. This can be expressed either as 0.5 or in fraction form one half. Now I can grab my tape measure tool and double check my measurement and now we can see that my outside dimension is in fact 12 inches. Now I'm ready to move on to drawing the front and back of my object. For this, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool 
and I know that it has to fit in this inside this opening so I'm going to click and release on the top inside corner of the left side and drag down to the bottom inside corner of the right side and click and my piece is shaped exactly correct now I need to add the half inch thickness so I can grab my push pull tool click on that face and start pushing it towards the inside of the box so that it is positioned correctly and set my di my distance to one half inch now before I move on I need to make a group out of that object triple click right click make group now I need to recreate this piece on the back edge of my sketch <clears throat> so I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to click on the back side the inside of this object click and release to start moving and then press control to leave a copy in the original spot now I can change my view and you can see how this the tool in SketchUp wants to snap to the end point of a pre-existing piece. It wants to line your pieces up for you. So I can position my cursor to where it says endpoint in group and click. And that piece is now perfectly positioned on the back side of my model exactly where I need it to be. The only thing left now is to draw the top inside this opening. And as we've done before, we'll grab our rectangle tool and we'll start on the inside corner here, click and release and drag down to the corner on the opposite side. Now, we do want to constrain to a certain face, in this case the blue face, and you can see as I drag across the blue rectangle appears and I draw corner to corner. I'm going to grab my push-pull tool. I'm going to click and drag down into the model and type my dimension 0.5 and press enter and before I move on I'm going to make a group triple click right click and make group now I need to make a duplicate copy of this and position it at the bottom of my model you can see the bottom is still open to do that I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to click on the corner start dragging down and press control to leave a copy where I just was. Now I'm going to orbit around my model and snap to that corner and place my piece. But you can see that it's protruding out the bottom. It's not inset properly. So to move my, my piece up, I'm going to click on this corner here that's sticking out and drag up and snap it to that corner. And now I have my model that is 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches square. I can confirm this with my tape measure tool. Click and release on the corner and drag across and hover 12 inches across the red axis, 12 inches across the green axis, and 12 inches down the blue axis. So I have achieved my goal of making my object 12 by 12 by 12. The benefit to making groups as you go along is now I can use my move tool and I can grab this, the different pieces of my model, excuse me, and I can separate them. And they all move independent of each other. And now I can orbit around, I can look at all of my individual pieces, and I can easily measure any piece that I would like to find out exactly how big it is. The lid for the box is actually 11 inches by 11 inches by a half an inch. And the same will be true of the bottom. The front and back, the second piece that we drew, are going to be 11 inches across and 12 inches down. And the sides, the first pieces that we drew, are going to be 12 inches by 12 inches. 
using the snap functions within SketchUp, I can easily put my piece, my structure, back together. I'll grab my Move tool, and I'm going to bring my pieces back into their original positions. Again, taking advantage of the fact that SketchUp wants to snap to existing points. Sometimes, because of the view that we're at, it's difficult to get a piece to snap where we want it. So rotating and orbiting around our object can solve that problem for us. And now I have reassembled my complete structure.